Welcome. We're really glad you're here. Um, I hope everyone's got a packet. You've got a name tag in there. Hope you've started to introduce yourself to the people at your tables. I promise we're going to feed you, but you have to get partway through the workshop first. Um, well, I'll just go to here. So congratulations. I would like all of you to give yourselves a round of applause. You've just won the game of tenure. Um, so the first frame is you were not the only claimant to the tenured post. We hired four other assistant professors. Excuse me? The dragons are impressive, but you'll need more outside funding to really impress the committee. And finally, we are all that stands between civilized society and college students. <laughs> so a lot of falls, I do an orientation for PhD students who've been awarded a fellowship to spend a year writing their dissertations. And our message to them is, hey, congratulations, now get to work. And our message for you all is a little different. It's congratulations. We know you're working hard, but take time to really acknowledge this significant accomplishment. You've been working on this since before you started grad school. So you've been working towards goals partly defined by other people for an extremely long time. And this promotion comes with ex some expectations, but it also comes with some opportunities. And this is your time to start thinking about the fact that this is your career. What do you want it to look like? You have a lot more say now than you did a few months ago. And we would like to help you acknowledge that and think about what that looks like. And this quote was in an article in Higher Ed, and it's about science, but I think it broadly applies. A career in science should be an adventure on a long and winding path rather than uphill slog to a peak that few have ever attained. Science is about interacting with and discovering the world. So isn't it a shame that so many of us are persuaded to walk the same narrow and well-trodden path to perceived academic success? I think this is broadly true of any field. You're an associate professor now. There are a lot of paths you can choose, and you get to choose. We are not suggesting you shouldn't be in academia. We're saying the goals that you are now striving for should be partially set or a lot set by you. You know, you've been fulfilling other people's expectations. It's time to spend a little time thinking about what yours are. There's easily a day's worth of material to cover, and we've got a couple of hours. So today you're going to get an introduction. It's a shallow skipping across the surface on some topics, some of which you're ready to hear, some of which, honestly, some of you are not ready to hear. And that's OK. This isn't the only time to get this information. There's going to be other opportunities, either to get more information about a topic or get the same information again when you're ready to think about it. In your packet, you have a sheet that allows you to give us feedback on what workshops would you like to see. Is there a topic we briefly introduced that you'd like a workshop, you know, an hour workshop on? What resources would you like to know more about? Would you like a meeting with a uh, faculty research support officer with me, with someone from advance, um, to talk about this. So I left right in with the congratulations. I'm Julia Fulgham, Director of Advance at UNM. Although our NSF mission is to recruit, retain, and advance women and minority STEM faculty, we do a lot for all faculty. This is one example. The further in we get, the more we're collaborating with academic fairs on a range of workshops and activities that are meant to be of benefit for all faculty. So Rebecca's handing out that sheet now. As, you, as we go into the workshop, think about um, what would be helpful for you and let us know. And we're, we don't have our spring workshop schedule fleshed out yet. And of course, there's time next year. So you have some new expectations. You're now expected to play more of a role in running your department, contributing to the school or college, and the university. 
We want you to take your service seriously. Service, defined broadly, is an expectation for promotion to professor. And we do all want all of you to be promoted to professor. And we would like all of you to positively contribute to your department, to the school, to the university, in a way that advances those units and that you enjoy and doesn't derail your scholarship and teaching. And particularly for women and minority faculty, not getting derailed is an issue. And so we want you to sort of go into this, consciously make decisions about how you're spending your time. Obviously, you are expected to continue your research, scholarship, create, creative activity and teaching. All of a sudden, you're going to be asked to evaluate other colleagues for promotion and tenure. Ramesh, how long after you got your promotion letter where, did it take before you were asked to evaluate another colleague? I think it was about like, 10 days. <laughs> <laughs> as far as I remember, because it was a long time, like a month. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so pretty much instantaneously, all of a sudden now, you're expected to evaluate your colleagues for promotion and tenure, doing peer evaluations of teaching. And these are things that you have not been trained to do. And Phil's going to talk a little bit about some aspects of that. But you've also got opportunities. This is a PhD comics cartoon where before grad school, I'm going to research whatever I want. Grad student is, I'm going to research whatever my professor wants. The assistant professor, I'm going to research whatever my tenure committee wants. And the tenured professor, I'm going to research whatever my grant committee wants. Um, but you actually have a little more flexibility than that. You have the opportunity to take some risks. You have tenure. You can try the ideas that were maybe too risky. Um, you can try some new areas of research or scholarship. You can develop new collaborations with your scholarship or your teaching. You can try a different teaching style. Uh, you can develop community outreach. You can do more in your profession. You should not do all of these. You should make some conscious decisions. And you should not neglect the most important one. You made a lot of sacrifices to get here. This is your career. Think about. What have you given up that you enjoy that you want to build back into your life? Everyone's got a different answer. Could be time with friends and family. It could be exercising. It could be music. It could be the museums. Whatever it is for you, build some of that back in. You should find a way to enjoy this phase of your career. And Tina's going to talk about the importance of that shortly. But don't neglect this piece. Give yourself permission to do this. So you could develop new collaborations. You could explore new research directions. You could try some things in the classroom. You can take on some leadership roles in the department. But do you have to? Should you want to? This is the part where I'm about to go into a really shallow, skipping across the surface piece. And it's OK if you're not ready to think about any of this. Tina's going to talk about why that's OK. But these are things you should know at some point when you're ready, consciously think about. Research and scholarship expectations. So broadly, you're going to be expected to continue to develop your research, you know, a broader perspective, some maturity to the program. Whatever that looks like, depending on your field, is an implicit and frequently explicit expectation. But we've been asking department chairs, <coughs> does your department expect associate professors to make big changes in their research agenda, such as asking new questions, using different tools, expanding in a different direction? And so far, the most common answer is, meh. You've spent all this time developing a reputation. <laughs> Keep going. You know, You may want to try a new direction. You may have some new ideas. You may want to expand what you're doing. But that's from you. This is your decision now. Your department wants you to keep going. And they hope your ideas will mature and develop, but no one expects a sharp right or left turn. What do you want to do? Working with students. What do you want your teaching and mentoring contributions to be at this point? You know, let's think about that too. 
you know, if classroom experiments are less risky at this point. So you could experiment with your approach to teaching. You are going to be asked to do peer review teaching of your colleagues. So you need to start thinking about that. What should that look like? Um, I love Lego grad student. My son's a grad student, so I... Uh, the grad student marvels at how the professor's random thoughts eclipse several months of his dissertation work. <laughs> and service. This is the big one. All of a sudden, there's, you're not protected from a range of requests that, at least in some departments, you've been protected from. And they may all pile on to you. How are you going to manage that? It is an expectation. We are all university citizens. We all need to contribute. We all need to say yes to some of the request. But this is one of my mantras. Neither feigned helplessness or martyrdom are going to advance your department, school or college, or the university. There's a lot of gray room in there in which you can be constructive. And you know, find, find that zone. So you get to partially choose your own adventure this afternoon. I was, I've got 20, 25 minutes at the end after the Q&A with the provost. And I was mulling over several topics. And I thought, I've got material on all these. I'll step out on a limb here and let you all vote. So get out your phones or your laptop or your tablet. We emailed you a link. Or you can, um, if, if it's up there, scan yeah, the QR can. code. You can vote anonymously on whether you would like me to spend a few minutes talking about managing service requests and commitments, running an effective committee, or research and scholarship expectations for promotion. Um, I'm happy to do any of those. And if your favorite doesn't get picked, then you know, write it down as a research topic that you want. And Phil, if the third one's picked, then you get to help with Q&A. I just told them to talk about not the same. Oh, OK. <laughs> so take a minute and vote. There's more of you than that in the room. We should be announcing ours. Does anyone have any questions while we're voting? <laughs> yes. Yeah. You can make an appointment with me. We also, um, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to do uh, a workshop on any of these in the spring. So you know, either you can make an appointment with me, you can write down on the form that, hey, this would be a great workshop topic. So um, what we want to do is learn what would be most helpful for you at this stage. There are many more ways to get to promotion to professor than there were to become a tenured associate professor. The excellence in research or teaching language is not in the promotion to professor. So you don't have to sweat exactly what does excellence in research look like. Um, so you've got a lot more options. And that, if you can embrace that flexibility that rather than being pressured by it, that makes it easier for you to once again think about this is your career. What do you want to be doing? And the person on campus who has read the most files is Associate Dean for Arts and Sciences Phil Ganderton. And so he's going to talk to you um, about a couple of things, which is going to include promotion, how teaching, peer teaching evaluations and promotion and tenure ballots are used at different levels. And so things you should think about when you're doing these for your colleagues.